Captain's personal log. We are en route to Starbase 26 for repairs. Thanks to the ISS Potemkin's mini bombs and the virus that infected our computer systems, we have very little that is operating at capacity. Good morning, Cap. Doctor! I've got him. Come on. Thank you. In addition to reassignment of over 200 personnel, the food synthesizer's recent malfunction has rendered more than half my remaining crew with what my doctor calls advanced food poisoning. Bridge. Despite Commander Smithfield's rather ingenious jury rigging of ship systems, her skeleton team can't keep up with the system failures and what was supposed to be a leisurely six-day trip has turned into over 15. Frustration is at an all-time high. Captain on the bridge. Captain, Starbase 26 has signaled their aware of our situation. They want to know if they can provide a tow. I heard that over my dead- If we need one, then we need one. You'll have warp speed in a few minutes. You've got five. Sir, you asked me to monitor the crew. There's one crew member I've noticed in particular who's suffering signs of severe fatigue. It's affecting his attitude and reactions to others. Are you handling me, Mr. Foster? No, sir. Just being a good first officer and hopefully a friend who has permission to speak freely. I'll let you know after I hear what you have to say. Sir, we're going to be in for repairs for quite a while. Starbase 26 is just a maintenance facility. Not much for recreational activities. I can have a shuttle ready for you in a few minutes and you can be on your way That will not be necessary, Mr. Foster. Thank you. Understood, Captain. Mike. Come on, come on, this can work. Commander. I've got this. Why don't you just take the damn tow? Same reason you're not taking leave. That'll do it. Logan. Board show all green, Commander. There you go, Captain. You have warp speed. Nice work. Mr. Morris, set a course for Starbase 26, warp factor one. Warp factor one? Aye, sir. Son of a... Lieutenant Freeman, let Starbase 26 know we'll take that tow. Sorry, Mike. Sometimes we have to do what we don't want to do. I agree. Captain. How fast can you have the shuttle ready?
Hello? Anybody home? Excuse me. Hold it right there. Mom? Johnny? Oh my goodness, Johnny, I wasn't expecting you. <laughs> well, who exactly were you expecting? Oh, well, um... <laughs> Aren't weapons still banned on Chloris? Now, Street? now, you know how paranoid your mother gets. You wouldn't turn her in for having a little home protection now, would you? <laughs> Come here, give me a hug. How are you, Mom? Oh, so much better now, Johnny. It is so good to see you. <laughs> Mom? Oh! I'm so sorry, Hope. Come here, please. Let me introduce you. Hope, this is my son, Johnny. Johnny, this is my new assistant, Hope. Jack Carter. Pleasure to meet you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so glad you got to meet him. <laughs> so what happened to Mark? Mark? Oh, he took a new job with what? The so Balkan Science Academy? Yes, two years ago. Mm, wow. <laughs> well, that's what happens when you don't call your mother on Mother's Day. I tried to call you on your birthday. Oh, I decided I'm not having those anymore. <laughs> um, I'll <laughs> let you two catch up. Yes. Yes. So we'll uh, get back to that data collection later. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Jack? So... To what do I owe the pleasure of your company, Mon Capitan? Well, the ferry had to be put in the Starbase 26 for repairs. Mm -hmm. You're not that far away, and it's been a while since I paid a visit. I think there's more than one while in four years. <laughs> <laughs> I guess saying I was busy isn't a very good excuse. <laughs> it never is. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to come and see you right after. I miss him too, Johnny. I'm glad the two of you had a chance to reconnect. He said he still loved you. I thought you should know that. Love was never the problem. Then why? I mean, if you love each other... Mom? I have a project I have to get done today. I wasn't expecting any company. I tell you what, why don't you get settled in, hmm? Your old room is available and tomorrow, let's have a nice, a nice brunch picnic and talk some more. Okay. So good to see you, Johnny. I love you. I love you too, Mom. Twenty-two. We read you. I have unexpected company. This is going to complicate things? No. As a matter of fact, I may be able to use it to our advantage. The proceed is planned. I'll keep you posted. Out. Welcome aboard the Farragut. Ah! You must be Commander Smithfield. I am, and this is Commander Foster and Lieutenant Commander Weston. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Dr. Elora Banning. I read your paper on warp core design improvements in starships. Did you? I recall you stating that you could improve on the efficiency levels currently being achieved in the field. You flatter me, and I'm dying to see what modifications you've made to the standard configuration. 
standard configuration? I'm anxious to get Farragut back up to specs. Well, we are delighted to have you here. Have you been briefed on our situation? Indeed I have. I've brought some new computer boards and some specialty techs to install them, and I've already scheduled a hull repair team. You've scheduled? Commander, I've been studying the specs of the Farragut for months. I'd really like to examine the ship for myself and get a feel for things, and then meet with engineering later to go over the repair schedules. Well, I'd rather... I can't imagine that would be a problem. Commander Smithfield will catch up with you in a little while. Wonderful. It's so exciting to be here. With me. You can get back to your repair station, Chief. Hi, Commander. Thanks, George. Next time, why don't you just give her the keys to my car, too? Don't you realize who that was? Dr. Banning is heading up the evaluation team for the Constitution Class II study for Starfleet. Class II? The Starship Refit Program? Yes, and she's here. That means they must be considering the Farragut for the program. Well, if we could just see what she's looking at while she's here. Well, I can't follow her around. It'd be too obvious since I'm in command. And I'd have to make sure her team doesn't screw up my ship. We'd need someone who doesn't have a lot to do while we're here in dock. Someone stealthy. Seriously? Can't we just ask her? She really said that? Sir? Commander? Huh? Did Commander Smithfield tell Dr. Banning's technical crew that they could not go into engineering? That's what I heard. You know, if it was my ship, I would say, I make the engines run here on Farragut, and no one other than my team can do it the way we do. Yeah, sounds good. Carry on. Oh, excuse me. Morning, Jack. Good morning. So, where's Dr. Carter? She got an important call at the last minute and said we should go ahead and have lunch without her and that she'll catch up later. An important call? She did tell me you know the perfect picnic spot. That I do. If you'd rather not, I'd understand. No. I know you were hoping to spend some time with your mother. I'm afraid I make a poor substitute. Not at all. Besides, it'd give me a good opportunity to meet Mom's new right hand. Let's go. You do know the perfect spot. Years of picnic expertise. <laughs> she packed the basket, I swear. Two glasses. <laughs> I'd swear if I didn't know better, she planned that emergency call. 
What did I mind? Mm. I mean, after all, it's good wine. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Cheers. Mm. Chicken salad, mom's best. Are you two very close? We are. My parents separated a long time ago, but even before then, it seemed like just the two of us. My father wasn't around much. So you grew up here on Clarice 3? I was born on Earth, moved here when I was nine, and stayed here until I left for the academy. Hmm. It's been a long time since I came for a visit. Almost forgot how beautiful it is. <laughs> You don't allow much time for relaxation. This is probably my first vacation in four or five years. Mm. I've been preoccupied. I guess you could say a neglectful son. Or else I would have known that Mark had left. I'm... Or you had gotten here. Had I known that, I would have came much sooner. You were right. It's good wine. <laughs> so how did you and my mother start working together? Oh, we uh, met on Vega. Vega? Mm. It's not exactly a botanical show place. Mm. Not a botanist. I'm still learning, you know. You're a student? Uh-huh. She has you as an intern. <laughs> Which means she's not paying you. Mm. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I'm, um... I'm still trying to decide what it is that I want to do. Well, that's what this experience is for. See, Commander, I told you there was nothing to be concerned with. But... They're no buts. They're here to help. And so far, even according to you, they're covering the punch list and doing a good job. So far. They haven't done anything you haven't authorized, have they? No. What are you two doing here? I thought you were on the bridge recalibrating the helm. We were, sir, but Dr. Benny needed access to the helm. So I've convinced Mr. Morris to go over to the station to get something to eat. Now, she has. Maybe you two should stick around. I may need a stretcher. Commander! 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 Hold that lift! I should have anticipated this, that the new computer boards would mean we would need to reset the helm. I'm not sure that we have to, Doc. They're only off by .01, and that's well within standard config. Because Commander Smithfield does better than that. She maintains less than one quarter of that is acceptable. We don't want to let her down. Look, I'm sorry to make you two do all this extra work, but she has set the bar very high. You know, that's okay, Doc. We're pretty impressed, too. If I start acting like an insecure idiot again, remind me about today. One of the best parts of my job, Commander. I think I'll go have lunch with Logan and Morris. I hear the station serves a pretty nice plate of crow. So what's it like being a starship captain? <laughs> well, the typical Starfleet officer response is challenging, rewarding, <laughs> which it is, but it's also lonely at times. Traveling to new worlds, meeting new people. Exploring is all I ever wanted to do. As a matter of fact, as a kid, I think I've explored every part of this planet. You never wanted anything else. I suppose I could be talked into something else. Mm. Oh, it's beautiful. It's a gift from my father. It's in an old language. It means, remember me. He gave it to me before I left.
Russian starship captain, John Thomas Carter. Another Carter. Interesting. What do you wish us to do, Lord Minister? Continue observation. I need to know if she has that data crystal. I will contact you. Understood? Understood, Lord Minister. So that's it? That is everything I could see. And you're sure she didn't notice you? Oh, it was like the wind. Okay. Ah, Commander Smithfield. I'm so glad I got to see you before I left. Thank you again for all your help. We needed it. I wish I could stay longer, but other work needs my attention. My team will stay behind, though, and of course they're at your beck and call. We could use the extra hands. Oh, and uh, you didn't have to follow me around the whole time. You could have just asked me out. I would have said yes. I like the wind. I said we could have asked her. I guess I didn't know the right question. And I've participated on several first contact missions, bringing in new members in the Federation. Is it difficult for them to let go of so much of their own way of life to join? No one gives up their culture. The entire point is for us to come together, explore new ideas, share new things. You don't lose who you are. What? We were always told that to join the Federation would be the end of our way of life. Told by who? I thought you were from Vega. I never said I was from Vega. I said it's where I met Rose. I wasn't trying to be deceptive, but she said that I shouldn't talk about it. My mother. Hope, what's going on? Where are you from? Themis. Themis? Themans are isolationists. The Federation has tried for years to... The farthest we ever got was a treaty to leave each other alone. That's true. Then how did you come to Vega? And what's my mother have anything to do with this? Occasionally, some of us venture forth from our home to teach others to embrace the light, to live a life of clarity. Missionaries. Yes. And that took you to Vega. In a way. Why are you here? Are you trying to recruit my mother? I doubt the light would want her. No. I no longer embrace the light. I've learned that many of the teachings aren't true. We've, we've been lied to. Lied to? It was under the guidance of Lorne that our people found their way. Our world was torn apart, war, famine, Lauren helped us to find clarity. He saved our world. What changed? The council. They now control the word. The people, the people don't know. How do you know this? Lauren is my father. Oh. He told me the truth. I can't imagine how that would feel. I wanted to stay and help spread the truth, but I was afraid. I ran away. I abandoned him. You tried to protect yourself. When I got to Vega, your mother approached me. She, she said that I could stay with her, that, I, that she could make arrangements. Arrangements? She wanted to know if I had a, a data crystal with my father's words. I never recorded his words to me. I asked her if she could get me asylum. She could? We're being watched. Your people? The Ministry Guard. Come on. We've been spotted. Call Lord Minister Consus. 
He said not to. Do it. Yes, sir. Lord Minister. Commander, we're receiving a distress beacon from USS Babylon. Get me Starfleet Command. Asylum you still want, I just need to talk to the right people. In case something happens to me. I won't let it. Remember me. I need to talk to the fair again. Johnny, help what's going on. That's what I like to know. They found me. Oh, I didn't think they'd be so quick. Really? Do you have the data crystal? If you do, give it to me. I don't have it. I told you before. She doesn't know anything about a damn crystal. If she has the crystal, I can get her a deal. She doesn't need that to get protection <laughs> from Starfleet. She needs more protection than Starfleet security can offer. Come on, dear. Let's go. Where are you going? To get a cup of tea, if you don't mind, Captain. Carter Farragut. Captain, we've been trying to reach you. We have a situation here. I have one here as well. Sir? I need to arrange political asylum. That could take some doing, sir. May I ask political asylum from which planet? Themis. A big ask. The current treaty with them is I don't possible. care about the treaty. There is a specific clause that the Federation will not interfere in their Find journalism. me a loophole. Aye, sir. What's the situation you're calling about? It's the Babylon. We picked up a recurring distress beacon. We're the closest starship. And we can be underway in a few hours, but we're nowhere near 100%. Get as close as you can. Call me when you depart. We can pick you up. Negative. I'll meet you en route. Carter out. space without proper authorization. That's a problem. Easily resolved. Just give us the data crystal and the criminal and we'll remove ourselves from your space. There's no crystal here and no criminal. Why must we play these games? Of course. I must admit that your cover as a starship captain clever and unexpected. Cover? We know who you work for. We're familiar with Section... What difference does it make who works for whom? Your presence here violates our treaty. Our agreement allows for the pursuit of criminals without any... She's not a criminal. She's seeking asylum. And to pursue a criminal in Federation space, you need to have informed the Federation Council of your intent and provided a warrant. And I'm betting you haven't done that. Uh, under your laws, that may be true. But to a Themen, it's the crime of sedition. And guilty until proven guilty is my motto. Johnny? Mom, move. No! Get it. Now, my dear, what would your father think? doing? The right thing. I surrender to you, Lord Minister Consus. I plead guilty to the crime of sedition, and I await my trial in Themis. Granted. 
It's my duty to inform you, you will be found guilty. Our transport awaits. I bid you good day. Oh. Do not interfere, Carter. It's fine. This is the right thing to do. I can't abandon my father. But what about you? Maybe what happens to me will force others to question the way things are. Maybe that way my father's words can be heard. Thank you for showing me possibilities. Bye, Jack. You wanted this. Of course not. You wanted her to go back. Why? So she could be a martyr? It's not the way I see it. Do you have any idea what they'll do to her? Prosecute her publicly imprisonment. I'm not gonna let that happen. There's nothing you can do. Themis is an online planet. Federation justice is meaningless there. There must be a diplomatic solution. You know there isn't. Tell me why. She can make a difference. When word gets out, other Themans will join the cause. Whose cause? Yours? The Federation's cause. Freedom. <laughs> not for her. Themis is in a very strategic location. Its eventual addition to the Federation is going to be... You use your own son as a means to an end. To have her not accept political asylum, but to go back home no matter what the cost to her would be. I did not ask you to be here. You came unannounced. How long have you been... More than a botanist? A spy? Wouldn't call it that. Give it a name then. Agent? Operative? How long? I am who I am. My botany work gave me access to places I might not have been able to... Unbelievable. Reach. Was Dad aware? I never hid anything from your father. This whole time I blamed him. <laughs> it was never your place to blame anyone. This was our lives, our decisions and, and our consequences. So I didn't know either of you. Oh, Johnny, you did. What you do? You know who I've always been, Johnny. I thought I was growing up with someone like George Washington Carver. Instead, I was being raised by Mata Hari. <gasps> I am still your mother. Have some respect. She said Benedict Arnold. Oh, Johnny. Johnny, we're on the same side. And, and I've never interfered in anything you have done. No? I swear on your father's name. You have to answer that. Carter here. Captain Farragut is underway. We can rendezvous with you in 12 hours. I'm sending you optimal transit coordinates for your shuttle. I'll see you there. Carter out. You have to go. Trust me, you wouldn't want me to stay here right now. I, I understand. But know that I love you. And I've always tried to think of the, of the greater good for you and for the Federation. Mm -hmm. I need to get my things. Bye. Status. They changed the distress signal to planetary quarantine, code 7. Viral infection? We can be there in a few hours. Code 7. We won't leave anyone behind. Understood, sir. I must note my objection, though. Noted, Mr. Foster. For the record, dismissed. He's just doing his job. I know. 
How's Rose? Everything okay? I'll be in my quarters. Remember me. This is the word of Lorne. I record these words for all Themans, so that the truth can be known. Our way has been lost. The Council lies. Clever girl. <laughs> Cover here. Sir, we've made contact with the Babylon survivors. I'm on my way. Captain on the bridge. Dr. Durham said they'll be fine. She just wants to keep him in medical quarantine a little bit longer. If she says so, Captain. <laughs> Listen, about that theme of treaty, I found something you may be able to use. That won't be necessary, Mr. Foster. But thank you anyway. George, hold on to this. We'll talk about it later. Very important. Captain, we're receiving a transmission from Starfleet Command. It's Admiral McCann. Admiral McCann? It's got to be about the refit program. The survey team submitted a report. Wow, that was like two days ago. Well, let's not keep the good Admiral waiting. On screen. Hello, John. It's good to see you, sir. I wanted to contact you myself. As you know, Farragut is one of the oldest starships in the fleet, and she's taken quite a beating. You're to report to your home port, Utopia Planitia. For refit, sir? To be decommissioned. She just won't be able to handle the upgrade. And with the new ships in progress, well, I'm afraid her time is over. I understand, sir. I'm sorry, John. Thank you for telling me yourself. Godspeed, Starship Farragut. McCann, out. Mr. Logan, set a course for Mars, best possible speed. Aye, Captain. This is unlike anything I've seen before. From what we can tell, this is a naturally occurring phenomenon. We know the disastrous effects of tampering with time. Aye, sir. Of course, already plotted. Laid in. Consider it done.
You know, they say that the first day on the job is a good gauge of how it'll go every day. Carter here. Sir, the shuttle pod is ready to depart on deck 12. I'll be there in a moment. She was a good ship. So now what? Has anyone received their orders? Well, you're all on leave for the next six weeks. And I suggest you get a lot of rest. We only have 18 months. 18 months until what? Shakedown. Welcome home. of the silence that your voice breaks I've only met you from just a gaze How did you get here? Take a piece of my heart It's just the beginning Already falling apart
moment of silence that your voice breaks a sound of silence that your voice breaks Federation. Call me Federation. <laughs> <laughs> 